Namaskar devotees. Uh, just a short introduction of uh, the Living Arts Center or Ashutosh Sambhi. Ashutosh Sambhi is a faculty with the Art of Living Foundation and teaches the Happiness Program and the Sri Sri Yoga Program. He seeks to be an undying disciple of the practice of yoga and shares his experience with others under the guidance of his guru, Zionist Sri Sri Ravi Shankar Singh. In his professional capacity, Ashutoshji is employed as the financial controller for the City of Toronto Economic Development Corporation. Ashutosh will take us through the yoga sessions today and he's done this for us a couple of times. Once was June 21st when we first started when we had the International Yoga Day and today he's going to do a wonderful job. And sit down, relax, enjoy. requested by VGT to sit on the uh, on the stage. There are some mats in the front, so it will be nice to experience some asanas. So if uh, you like to come to the front, that will be fine. Be okay. Some can be described in words, 
Some just need to be experienced. Mm -hmm. So what we will do today is, I'm, we will share some benefits of yoga and we will experience some other through the yogi practices. Is that good? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are three, the, the benefits of yoga are on three levels. On the physical level, on our body, mental level, on our mind, and on the spiritual level. So what are the benefits, the physical benefits of yoga? The first and foremost is it gives flexibility to our body. Right? When we do, when we move our body from there to there, what happens? The entire lower back area gets the muscles, the bones, the, 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 our, our skeletal system all gets flexible. It becomes stronger. On the other hand, there are the three chakras, you know, the seven energy centers. When we just do this, the body rotation or the pendulum, the three lower chakras are in our body, they get energized, they get harmonized. Correct? So flexibility of muscles. See, there are five systems in our body. The muscular system, the skeletal system, the respiratory system, the endocrine system, and the neurological system. With yoga, the full exercise of yoga, the ashtam yoga, we can affect all these five systems in our body. Right? Flexibility of muscles, strength of muscles, alignment of our whole skeleton. You know, some of the asanas we do, like the Pavan Muktasana, right? which we do, some of you may know, we will do it today. Pavan Muktasana aligns our hip. What happens is that if sometimes we have a pain in our knee or in our foot, or if we are not walking properly, our hip becomes unaligned. When the hip becomes disaligned, the entire spinal column becomes disaligned. And to fix that, the head becomes disaligned. So the hip, if the hip is a little bit like that, the spinal column turns this way because the body is like a flame. You know, when you see a flame of a lamp, where does the flame go? Only one direction it goes up. So even if you turn the lamp on the on the sideways, where will the flame go? It will go vertical. Same way our body is designed. So if our hip is not aligned, if the hip is turned this way, then the spine needs to adjust itself to keep the body upright. Correct? So that, but the spine is now twisting because the hip is not aligned. Correct? Now when the spine is twisting, the head, which is on the upper column of the spine, now cannot see, remain straight, so it's going to tilt this way. So our whole spine becomes unaligned. But with the practice of yoga asanas, the whole spine, the whole skeletal system can be aligned and it strengthens, it improves our posture. When we learn how to sit with our spine erect, our posture improves. When the posture improves, so many benefits. First and foremost, digestion. Right? When we sit like this, when we walk like this, which we normally do, including myself, this is how we do, this is how we sit. Right? What happens? The values are become imbalanced. The digestion doesn't happen properly. Versus sitting like this, it is a very simple adjustment. Two steps to this adjustment. Push from your lower back, lift your thoracic region. Just this simple adjustment through yoga, yogic learning changes our entire posture, digestion and vayu movement. Right? Vayu doesn't only mean the gastric 
uh, value in our system. There are five different kinds of values. Hmm? So that the, even the movement of our food from here to out of the body is the movement of a wire. If the wire is not balanced, our whole movement of food from start beginning to end will not move properly. So the Pavan Muktasana that we do balances all the five wires. So these are the few benefits of, of um, yoga. Yoga also affects the endocrine system, the neurological system, endocrine. How endocrine? Just one simple, see we all suffer from thyroid issues, right? It is becoming in this day and age, in the 21st century, thyroid issues have become so prevalent, right? Simple asana to alleviate thyroid is just chin to the chest. Chin to the chest, just this elevates our thyroid issues. When we do shoulder stand, what happens? The chin automatically comes close to the chest. Right? That simple exercise doing every day will help in thyroid issues, thyroid imbalance. Hmm? So endocrine, neurological. Some pranayamas, we we'll we'll learn some pranayamas today. Some pranayamas actually energize the nervous system. Kapal Bhati, you must have heard about Kapal Bhati Pranayam. Some of you might be doing it. Kapala, Kapala means we generally believe Kapala means the forehead. Bhati means shining. So a general understanding of Kapal Bhati Pranayam means shining forehead. But we, do we just want a shining forehead? No. Kapala is the skull and shining is effulgent. Effulgent brain, effulgent skull. So just by doing Kapala Bhati, your skull, your brain gets energized. Prana, bombarded with prana. Right? So see how the just simple things, how it can benefit our entire body, mind and spirit combination. Yoga is that, right? You all know. Yoga is huge, is union, coming together. That is the real meaning of yoga. Coming together of body, mind and spirit, with the spirit. Through the help of the breath. Correct? Yes, you all know that. So, by doing this, the whole sequence of yoga and I, by that I don't just mean asana. Asana will help on physical level and a little bit on the mental level. We, we don't want to stop there. But we want to have this body, physical, mind and spiritual union. Correct? That is when we get the real fulfillment, the real inner joy which never leaves us. Do you, do you realize that that is what we need? We, what do we want in life? That everything we have in life should stay with us forever. Isn't that we want? Our money, our health, our beauty, our relationships. Everything we want to stay with us forever. <coughs> you know what is the basis of that desire in us? The desire that everything should stay with us forever is that the joy, the inner joy which it gives is that is what we want forever. Chid Anand. Chid Anand. So yoga also gives clarity of mind, alertness, concentration, focus, ability to handle short-term and long-term stresses. Imagine if we can achieve all these things, how peaceful our mind will be, how happy we will be. Yeah? Hmm? And on the spiritual level, the knowledge of yoga 
makes us and gives us this larger understanding of the oneness of this creation. It gives, gives us that fulfillment, that inner joy. And with that inner joy, the only thing we can do is to do service. Yeah? If we are not happy inside, can we go and happily do service? It goes hand in hand. Hmm? So, these are the few benefits of yoga. Now we have learned something through words. Let us also exercise some through asanas, pranayamas and some dhyana. Yeah? We will do some dhyana at the end. Good? We will have a session for question and answers also at the end. But now if you need to ask a question, definitely just raise your hand. If you have a question about an asana or a pranayama. So, okay? Good, so what we will do, <coughs> we'll start with chanting of Om. Let's close our eyes. Let, let the yoga begin. And how does the yoga make, begin? By bringing the mind together, the mind here. Bringing the mind from outwardness to the inner self. And the best way to do it is to become aware of the breath. Observe the incoming breath and the outgoing breath. Watch the breath coming in to your nostrils and leaving your body. Incoming breath energizes the body and outgoing breath relaxes the body. Let's observe this phenomenon happening every moment inside of us. some pranayama. Hmm? Good. Prana is that subtle life force energy inside us. Yama means directing that life force. That is pranayama. Hmm? So we learn two beautiful pranayamas. The first one is called Bhastrika pranayama. So Bhastrika, the, you can sit whichever, but if you can sit in Vajrasana, that helps. The people who are sitting on the chair, you are perfect. 
So, Bhastrika Pranayama, I will demonstrate it first and then I will explain. Okay? Loose fists in line with the shoulders. Have you all learned this? Did we learn it before? No? Okay. You guys are doing so well, so I'm a little surprised. Good. So it's very easy. Loose fists in line with the shoulders. Our underarms are touching our sides. So we're not like this, we are like this. As we breathe in, we throw our arms up, open the palms. As we breathe out, we close our palms. And we breathe out with a slight force, only very slight. Okay, so like this. I'll just show it once again. Just observe. Okay, slight force on the out breath. Okay, okay. The palms always stay forward. So we are not doing this. We are not. We are not doing this. We are doing. Like this, not like this, not like this, like this. Palms facing forward. Okay? And when you are bringing down your hands, as if you are pulling something. Okay? And with a slight force on the out breath. Okay? Good? And so you can keep your eyes open for the first two, three rounds, and then you can close your eyes. Your experience will be much better if the eyes are closed. I will give a count one. Two. At the count of one, we breathe in. At the count of two, we breathe out. Okay? Okay. We'll start with a normal breath in and out, and then we'll begin the mastery. So let's take a normal breath in and breathe out. Empty the lungs and let's begin. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, one, two, 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 and relax. Relax with your palms on your thighs, open to the ceiling. Keep your eyes closed. Observe the surge of prana, the surge of energy in the body. We'll do second round. If it's painful to sit in Vajrasana, you can sit in Sukhasana. Right? Our mind should be on the breath. Right? I'm used to doing this so I can sit like this. But if you're not, if it's painful, if your knee is pleading, if your foot is pleading, no. Our focus should be on ourselves, not on the knee. Okay? Second round. Let's take a deep breath in and empty the lungs. And let's begin. One, two. One, two, 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 one, one, two, and relax. Palms on your thighs, open to the ceiling. If you have high blood pressure, please do Bhastrika gently, slowly. 
Let's do one more, one last round. And let's take a deep, normal breath in and breathe out and begin. One, two, 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 one, two. One, two, 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 and last.
I was not, I was primary. So just to, it's, it might be a little difficult to identify, Brahmri relaxes our nerves, nervous system. So if we are anxious, if we are agitated, if we are angry, that anger in our system, doing Brahmri, it relaxes, it reduces everything. Isn't it amazing? Just see how much treasure we have in the science of yoga. Who would have thought that just doing three times this and effect on the nervous system? Good. Hmm? Any questions about Brahmi? Good. This is easy, right? These two are easy pranayamas. Okay? So now let's do some asanas. Yeah? So because some of us are sitting, so we'll do a mix of both the sitting and on the mat asanas. Good? Yeah? So, let's begin with the neck. Our neck is the point which collects a lot of stress. Maximum emotional and, you know, stress from work collects in the neck and the shoulder region. Hmm? And that then percolates down and we start getting diseases because the stress is not released. Okay? So what we will do, during the next 15 minutes we will do some stretches, some asanas. During these asanas, when we are doing it, remember three rules. All upward movement, we breathe in. All downward movement, we breathe out. Smooth, long breaths. Correct? So if I'm saying, let's do this, the <coughs> downward movement, so we are breathing out. I will guide you through the breath also. Now what is the significance of breathing? See, with every movement we do, stresses which are settled in our different parts of the body, they get released from the cells. But if we, they are not thrown out of the system, then they, what will happen, they will again go and settle down there. So breath has the ability to release 80 to 90 percent toxins from our body. Breath removes 80 to 90 percent, 90 percent of toxins from our body. Water removes 8 to 9 percent of the rest. Drinking water is very, very good, very beneficial. At least two liters of water minimum, we must drink in a day. Okay, so that is why breath is important. So let's start with the stretch of the neck. Now, in yoga, what is the rule, first rule of yoga? Listen to your body. Hmm? Don't listen to the next neighbor's body. Don't look at what the neighbor can do. Right? If I can do this, but you can only do this, that is your limit. That is what you must do. That is what is called listening to the body. Okay? So that is that rule we will follow. But we will also follow this other rule whereby we will stretch ourselves till we feel sweet pain. Not a struggle, but a sweet pain. Hmm? That rule also applies to our life. What happens when we struggle through our life? Life becomes pointless. Correct? But when we have to put a little effort to our limit, then what happens? Life becomes smooth. Hmm? Sthira Sukham Asana. That is the rule of it. Sthira is steady. Sukham is comforting. Asana is the posture. Okay, so that's how we will do. Okay, so let's sit straight. It's always good to sit erect. And how do we sit straight? Push from your lower back, push up, push up from your lower back, lift your thoracic, lift your chest. Okay, so we'll remind ourselves as we do our asanas today to sit like this. Okay, people on the chair also come on the edge of the chair. Then you can sit like this. If you sit 
at the back of the chair, then you will slouch. But if you sit like this, then you sit here. Okay? So, breathing out, let's bring our chin to the chest. Breathing in, come back to the center. Breathing out, chin to the ceiling. Breathing in, come back to the center. Breathing out, chin to the right shoulder. Relax, come back to the center. And breathing out, chin to the left shoulder. Breathing out, come back to the center. And breathing out, breathing in, I mean breathing out, chin to the chest once again. Let's do a full neck rotation. Breathing in as you bring your head up from the right hand side. Take it behind. Breathing out, bring it down in the front. Smooth, long breaths in and out. Very slow and deliberate movement. This is done very slowly. If you feel any pain or constriction at any point, stop there, take a few breaths in and out, and then continue. When you come to the center, reverse the direction. Again, sitting erect. 
Press from your lower back, lift your chest, and then slowly we turn to the right. Your left hand goes on the right knee, and your right hand goes behind your back. Push your body upright and look over your right shoulder. Hold it. Continue breathing. With your left hand, you're pulling your body towards the right. And with your head, you're pulling it further. Keep your body straight. If you're tilting, then make your body straight. And release. Come back to the center. And then, same thing to the left. Look over your left shoulder. With your left hand, push your body upright. Make it upright. With your right hand, pull it towards the left. With your head, pull it further. Continue breathing. And release. Come back to the center. Now this one, we are going to do it very gently. This we do slowly. We are going to do a little fast. Okay? But listen to your body. Okay? So we are doing this. Don't forget your breath. Now you will feel, some of you will feel the sweet pain. It is good to feel the sweet pain. And relax. Come back to the center. Feeling good? Mm -hmm. The spine, the next important point is where the spine collects a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. So, exercise in moving the spine is very essential every day. Mm? How we, how stiff we become, right? Sitting, watching TV, we sit for two hours like this in front of the TV. What happens to the spine? Right? We are not, our posture is not correct. There is not enough circular circulation in the spine. So what happens? And the spine becomes misaligned. Correct? Okay. So, the next one we'll do is a pendulum. So, if you're sitting very close to your neighbor, you may just go to the next chair. You can move to the next chair. Okay? So, right. Now, let's correct ourselves. How is a pendulum? You remember the pendulum in the grand grandfather's clock? It is going like this, correct? It is not going like this, like this. Is it going like this? No. It's going like this. So your movement is happening from the base of your spine. And your head is following your body. So you're not, you're not doing this. You're doing this. And then slowly we will release our spine so the spine can flow freely. And whilst doing that, we will if we'll go further down, put our elbow to the floor, lift the other side. Yes. Yes. Let's see who can touch their head on the other side. <laughs> Remember we used to do this when we were kids? Yes. 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 Great. <coughs> Slow down. Good. This makes our lower back support. Right? Right? We will do another one, which is called the full body rotation. Right? So on the people on the chair, just do as much as you can. Okay? But the full body rotation again, we are going to sit straight. Push from the lower back. Body erect. Lift your chest. Breathing in. We will look up. Pull up. Breathing out, continue looking up and start bending forward. Continue looking up, continue looking up, and when your body is in line with the, with the mat, with the floor, then drop your head, go down. See if you can touch your forehead to the floor. 
and then let's quickly the body rotation from the right start bringing up your body from the right hand side go back as much as you can look up and then come down on the left breathe in as you're going up breathe out as you're coming when you're coming down, if your body can touch your thighs or your legs, it is better. If you cannot, make sure that you are bending from the waist and not from your upper back. And then complete this circle and then reverse the direction. Breathing in, come up from the left, breathing out, come down from the right. Let's start. 
Okay, what do we do when we are upset, when some stress comes to our head? Oh my God, Ali Baba. We do that? Right? Okay, so that, oh my God. And then, it's a very natural reflex expansion that you know, nature has given us. So move, massage your scalp. Don't worry about your hair. We are all in the same boat. <laughs> so massage your scalp. Huh? And then massage the sides above the head, above the, above the ears. And then the back of the head. You should feel the scalp moving, not just the head. And continue breathing. Whilst we are doing this, take long deep breaths. Okay? And then let's spread our forehead with the tip of our fingers from the center to the side. Good. And then what happens when we are stressed? We make a nice design with our eyebrows, right? Right? In the center, we don't want that design. We want our eyebrows to be straight. So let us straighten our eyebrows. With our fingers, let us straighten the eyebrows. So you pinch your eyebrows. Continue breathing. Gently massage the temples here. Very gently, right? This is a very delicate part. Good. With the same three fingers, we'll massage over the eyebrows and under the eyebrows. And to the sides of the eyes. Continue breathing. Good. Then with the with our thumbs, let us massage under the eyebrows, over the eyes. Good. And then with our fingers, let's massage under the eyes, with our index fingers. of the nose. And then with the tips of our fingers, let's massage the top of our lip, upper lip. And then go to the jaw. Find a spot which is painful. You'll find a few spots where you, when you press you feel pain. Do you find that? Do you feel somewhere, some spots? These are tension points. When we are tense, these, this is what happens. Right? And then pinch your chin. This helps in constipation. And then, massage. And then on the face. And then let's start pulling our ears. Remember, remind you of somebody when you were a kid? <laughs> and then go around your ears, pull to the side, and then pull the ear down. Once again, go around the ears and pull the top of the ears. Good? Okay, one last. Take your, okay, let's take the thumb. So take your thumb in front of you, keep your head straight. And then move your thumb to the right, let your eyes follow. You're not moving your head, so you're not doing this. You're keeping your head straight, 
you just moving your eyes. Come back to the center and move to the left. Come back to the center, move to the top right. Let your eyes fall and to the left and down. What we'll do, we'll focus our eyes in the center of the forehead. So look as if you are trying to see the center of the forehead. And then we'll do some palming. Palm your eyes. And the last is, we'll open our eyes and then close them tight. Open the eyes and close them tightly. So open the eyes, close them, squeeze them tightly. Open, squeeze. Open, squeeze. Open, squeeze. And relax. How did that, how, how was that? How did you feel? Relax and energize. Both. Right? Should we experience some dhyana? Meditation? Mm -hmm. So dhyana is not concentration. Mm -hmm. Meditation is deconcentration. Okay? So focusing on something will involve the eyes and the mind. But we want to go beyond the mind to the self. Okay? So but in the beginning, you do have to go through some understanding, some my mental activity and slowly, 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 that will subside, and then you will feel that peace inside. Hmm? We'll experience that? Okay. So, this is a guided meditation. I'll just guide you through what you need to do. Just relax and follow whatever instructions you can follow. If you cannot follow, also it is fine. Not to work. Okay, but just relax. Okay? And you can sit comfortably, whichever you're comfortable. If you need to sit on a chair, by all means sit on a chair. Okay? Let's close our eyes and keep them closed throughout the meditation. Let's take a deep breath in. Let's take a deep breath in. is a beautiful gift from God 
from nature. Honor and respect your body. Take your attention to your feet. Your knees, thighs, and the hips. Take your attention to the abdomen, stomach, <coughs> chest. Shoulders, right arm, left arm, throat, face, and the whole body, the whole body. And a deep breath in. Become aware of your thoughts. Good thoughts or bad thoughts, let them come. Do not resist any thoughts. You are now in harmony with your thoughts. Take a deep breath in. Become aware of your feelings, pleasant or unpleasant, let them be. Be in harmony with your feelings.
Become aware of the thoughts, if any, in the mind. Become aware of the sensations in the body, if any. How we want to be all of the lives in this space, calm and peaceful. Is that what we want? And just in one hour, look what we achieved. Some pranayamas, some asanas, you know, some dhyana, some culturing of the mind. Very easy to achieve. That is the purpose of our life. To be happy to have that inner joy, that peace. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Great. Great. It's so much fun to be here. Do you have any questions? Anything you'd like to know? Any observations? Actually, kids don't need yoga. Kids do yoga. Starting from the child's pose, the, you know, the situation, they do. If you see kids, they are born doing yoga. But, yes, so, so until they are the age of eight, eight, six or eight, they are already in that yoga, yogic position. Their mind is so innocent. They are constantly happy. Is after they start, if you must see when they do, they start collecting stresses. If has their life become sedentary, when they're ten or twelve, that is when slowly they can start. Hmm? Yes. Sudarshan kriya. Sudarshan kriya is an amazing breathing technique. Su means proper. Darshan means vision. Kriya is a purifying action. So through the action of the breath, we can get the vision of who we are. That is the purpose of Sudarshan Kriya. Sudarshan Kriya is taught in the Art of Living Foundation. 
after 10 days of silence, our founder, Shri Ravishankar, came up with this process. It is unique to Art of Living Foundation. It is taught in our first basic program called the Happiness Program. But it is life changing. It, is, it has changed life around the world. Just with the action of the breath, one feels so calm, so amazing, so untouchable. That is the word I will use. My mind, after I do my solution prayer every day, feels untouchable by anything happening around me. That is solution prayer. Any other question? Anything relating to yoga, pranayama, anything? How often you should do yoga? Is it every day or uh, once a month or twice a week? Yoga, you mean? Yeah. How often do we need to eat? <laughs> Brush, shower. How often do we need to do that? See, shower. <laughs> is external external purity. Correct? What about the internal purity? Did anybody, our parents, our grandparents, our school, our teachers, did anybody teach us to clean? Go out of your house every morning with a clean mind. Our parents taught us brush your teeth. Don't come out of your room without brushing your teeth. Don't go out of your house without Showering. Did anyone tell us don't go out of your house without cleansing your mind? Correct? But when we go out in the world, how much of our body and our clothing really protects us versus how much of our mind? You see that? If we are dealing at work, Majority, it doesn't matter what clothes I have worn at work. But how my mind is, how much stress is that I can handle on a day-to-day basis, that is what determines my day, my performance, the clarity, the focus, the alertness. Isn't that what determines how I perform at work or at school or anywhere in our life? Yes? Do you agree? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, morning. Preferably morning. If cannot, then in the evening. But with an empty system. Before breakfast. Before breakfast, yes. And after doing yoga, sit for five minutes. Sit for a few minutes with your eyes closed. Just observe your breath. Just observe your thoughts. Slowly, slowly, the thoughts will stop coming. That is meditation. Hmm? Anything? Anything else? No. Great. It is always such a pleasure to come here. You know, when I when I receive an invitation from anybody, from Menkaji, from Indrani ji, from Shankarji, I feel so happy to come here. This place is so beautiful, you all are so beautiful. I love to come here. Thank you so much for that.